Good evening. We are live from the news hub here in Addison with this is News 360. I am Lisa Moni. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. Health of workers at uh, Pokwasi Interchange Project sites at risk as they use stagnant gutter water for daily chores. 14 persons arrested for alleged logging of Rosewood's release for lack of evidence. On mission tonight, academic work at Poete KKMA Primary School under threat with the absence of a bridge on La Loy Lagoon. And later in international news, fresh fighting flares near Libyan capital Tripoli between pro-government forces and rebel fighters from east of the country. We have all the stories coming up in a bit. Stay with us. To our very first story, some workers at the Pokwasi Interchange Project site in the Gang West municipality are using stagnant gutter water provided them by management of the executing company for their household chores. The workers told Peter Kwawadato they experience itching bodies and skin rashes bathing and washing with the water pumped from the gutter for their use. Work on the $84 million three-tier Pokwasi interchange and other roads in the Gawasi municipality of the Gochaka region began in July 2018. The project, jointly funded by the Africa Development Bank and the Ghana government, is expected to be completed in April 2020 to ease traffic in the area. However, some of the local construction hands who are to ensure attainment of the goal may not live long to enjoy the fruit of their labor. The executing company, Zongmei Engineering Group Limited, under the Accra Urban Transport Project, is being accused of ill treatment. These pictures on social media prompted our attention. A casual look at the construction site confirmed the report. Here, the Chinese workers block the main gutter to accumulate water. They then fix pumps in here to supply water to the construction camp for use by the workers. We were told there is no form of treatment of the water that is used by the workers to take their bath, wash and for other household chores in a camp ironically tagged workers' welfare facility and office. A worker told us the only positive response to their complaints has been promises and threats. It took us a lot of time to get the workers to confirm the story due to possible victimization. Our body reacts to the water we bath, but they were not prepared to listen to our complaints. Some labor union officers came and advised them to provide a poly tank that could store water for use, but that is also yet to be implemented. We were also warned about a possible attack if the Chinese should see us filming the camp. Interestingly, across the road is a river that supplies water to Pokwasi and surrounding areas all year round. Secretary to the Construction Workers Union, Comfort Ayel Tige, confirmed the claims. This thing we have reported thrice. The employer said they are going to do something about it. But when we contacted the workers, they said they still pump from that place, which when they are bathing, they sent, they cannot contain it. So it is something that we are aware, we have done many attention to make sure that they do the right thing because in the law you are supposed to provide them with clean water. The workers warned the Minister for Roads and Highways to intervene to save them from imminent danger and poor health. Teaching and learning at the Tapapia Chrome DA Primary School in the Biakunya district of the Uti region is conducted under trees. Our correspondent Robert Abelba visited the school and reports six classes are combined in one class and taught by a teacher. Tapa Apiakrum is located near Abotwase. Residents here are predominantly petty traders and peasant farmers. The Tapa Apiakrum DA Primary School was established in 1978 to provide education for children in the area. Four decades after its establishment, the school's infrastructure is not in good shape. 
This does not promote effective teaching and learning. The current three-unit pavilion shed supported with bamboo strails and iron bars are used for lessons. Six classes are combined in one class and taught by a teacher. The school collapsed twice and I'm afraid if nothing is done, it will collapse again and this will not augur well for the people in the community. A teacher, James Katango, appealed to government to intervene. When I came here newly, we, the school population stands about uh, 125. But now we stand about 80 in the room, which is uh, decreasing down the, uh, the room, thereby driving the, the student away. But I can best tell that last year, the BC resort, the students we produce here, when you go to Abota, they were, they were part of the best performing students. Despite the challenges, the school is on the National School Feeding Program. Leader of Tapa Apiakrum, Nanalabi wants the assembly to come to their aid. Now, farmers in somewhere in the northern part of the country rely on donkeys so as to do their businesses. Zubaida Ismail has more. Donkeys are common in northern Ghana. Boko in the Upper East region is known to be the home of donkeys. They were first brought in and offered for sale from sub-Saharan Africa. In the Mamprugu traditional area, donkeys are mostly used for farming. They are also used for other activities during the dry season, including cutting of goods and fetching water. At least three out of every five homes have a donkey. Meet five-year-old Lariba, the oldest donkey for Joseph Timob. Donkeys, they are friendly because you can play with it, 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 will, it will not harm you. You can get the donkey about 400 dollars. Lariba, a female donkey, transports Larry Mack, son of Timob, to school every morning. While aspiring Dr. Larry gets ready for school, Lariba patiently waits for him. Lariba is aware of her routine and seems to enjoy it. This is evident in how she bends down for Larry to climb on her back without being directed. The journey starts, hoping to reach school on time. The journey came with its own little hurdles, but it was not anything that could not be handled by Larry. Slowly and steadily, he made his way to the school premises. The journey lasted 15 minutes. Larry gets off Larry's back and heads to the classroom. Just when I thought I have seen it all, another student arrived on his donkey. For children who live in an area that taxis are not available, it was clear the first option either when going to school, getting the barrels filled, or cutting produce from one location to the other, the donkey comes in handy. Zubaida Ismail, TV3 News, Bunkrubo. Right, let's remain in the north, but away from Larry and Lariba. Now, 14 persons arrested at Damango in the Savannah region for alleged logging of rosewoods by the rapid response team of the Forestry Division have been released. They are released according to the two officers from the Bupe Divisional of the Forestry Commission is based on lack of evidence. The Gonjo Traditional Council on April 12, 2017 unanimously banned logging activities and commercial charcoal burning within Gonjo land. The Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Kweku Asuma Chireme, at a news conference in Accra on Tuesday, March 12, also reaffirmed the total ban by the Ministry on the Conveyance, Salvaging, Processing, Transportation and Export of Rosewood in the country. However, the act continues unabated in parts of the northern and savannah regions. Efforts by some section of the youth in Gonjaland against logging discovered the activities in the district. A joint military and rapid response team of the Forestry Commission carried out the arrest on Monday, March 25, following a tip-off. It has been exposed 
They just have to allow them to process it. Then we'll do furniture and give it to the region, other needy schools, even hospitals. I know a number of hospitals will not have beds. We can use them and make beds and send them to them. Otherwise, we put fire on it. The suspects, five Chinese and nine Benin nationals, were rounded up at Yipala, a community in Damango, where an operational center has been set up by the Chinese to process rosewood. The operations team moved the suspect to the Damango police station, but the officers, who were delegated by the Bupe Division of the Forestry Commission, released the suspects. The officers, who declined interviews, revealed they have to visit the scene of the operations to establish if indeed the loggers have engaged in any illegality. They were led to the scene of the operation, but that, according to the officers, was not enough since they had to refer to documents in the Abu Pay office. They, however, released the suspects in the presence of the media with no explanation. Meanwhile, the Gonja Traditional Council has denied knowledge of the existence of a factory in the area. The Yegbunra uh, have never given any directive or authority to that, uh, in that respect. So the Gonja Traditional Council is not aware. The Traditional Council indicated it will investigate the existence of such operation center. In some more stories, life is gradually returning to normal at Disa in the Daboya district of the Savannah region after a three-day siege in January last year by some unknown persons. The community was raised over alleged claims of abduction of some men from Daboya. Zuweda Ismail has the rest of the story. Some plumbers who migrated from the northeast region in the 12th century settled at Disa. The community comprises about 500 households with about 50 habitants in each house. Here, houses are either identified by names of the heads of clans or names of husbands. This practice has created a bond among dwellers who live like a family. But the community was raised in the early hours of January 14, 2018 by some unidentified men over alleged claims of abduction of some men from Daboya. For close to 48 hours, families were separated. Mothers escaped with their babies under the cover of the night to the bush for safety. Toddlers ran in the dreaded night without their mothers with some going missing for days. Husbands slept two nights not knowing the whereabouts of their families. Hopes were dashed. Agnes Tika recounts her experience on that fateful dawn. It was a Saturday when we were sleeping. We heard gunshots. I ran out and saw flames all over. I rushed back inside to wake my children up and then carried the little one. We ran to the bush. We slept in the bush, returned the next morning to meet the whole house bent. I salvaged just my cooking pot. Ragnes and other women and children rebuilding their lives after the terrifying days would not have been possible without external support, particularly the National Disaster Management Organization, NADU. Those that brought items to us did not add dresses, so we had nothing to wear. We only had dresses to wear after Latif brought us some packages. An indigent, Latif, has always been at the forefront of rebuilding Disa. He has been soliciting support from individuals in Tamil. On his arrival at the forecourt of his cousin's house, children and adults had gathered expecting to return home with loads of gifts. Six years Damien got the first pick. Since the disaster time up to now, we would have run away from this village, but through their gifts that we are happy. One by one, tenants of the various houses backed their shares of the gifts. Obviously, there was a show of appreciation by some terrific drummers and dancers. Zubaida Ismail, TV3 News, Disa.
And now flood victims at Pagori in the Wai municipality of the Upper West region are undertaking a self-financing project of desilting a drainage in the area. The victims embarked on the project after they had their property destroyed in last year's downpour. Here's a report by Yakubu Abdul Gafu. Last year's floods affected a number of communities. In the immediate aftermath of the floods, victims formed an association and registered 38 households. The various households contributed 200 cities to the opening of the drainage. Residents have since raised 4,730 cities for the excavator to start operations. Properties and other things have gone far. We were so much committed to the project that we, a proposal was made to levy ourselves. We were all fed up here. So everybody was serious of getting a solution for this place so that the next rainy season time we will not experience this. One municipal chief executive, Alhaji Isahaku Tahiru Mumin, said government has a comprehensive plan to construct the whole tributary to link up with the main gutter from the Wa Central Market. Access to clean water and improved sanitation remains a challenge in most communities within the Esutifi North District of the Ahafu region. But an intervention under the Water Sanitation and Hygiene Initiative of World Vision International will soon bring relief to about 32,000 residents in the area. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The Sustainable Development Goal 6 stipulates access to safe water and improved sanitation for all by 2030. In spite of this, most rural communities in the country continue to battle water challenges. More than half of the population in the Esutifi North District do not have access to clean water and improved sanitation. To help improve the sanitation, the district assembly is partnering stakeholders in the water, sanitation and hygiene sector to reach out to 32,000 residents in 56 communities with improved water and sanitation facilities by 2022. Programs manager in charge of WASH at World Vision International Ghana, Robel Lambiso says $3.4 million has been committed to the four-year project. Sanitation activities will also be implemented in areas where we will do safe water supply interventions. The scope of the project will cover 56 communities. District Chief Executive for Isutifi North, Anthony Mensa, is optimistic the project will help solve water challenges facing residents. Now that this project has come, it is going to help by solving the water component of our problems. And, and then going into that, the sustainability of it will help minimize the challenges we have with regards to water. Ahafu Regional Minister Evans Opoku Bobie lauded the initiative to achieve full coverage of clean water and improved sanitation. You're watching News 360 and still to come tonight. No news, fresh fighting flares near Libyan capital Tripoli between pro-government forces and rebel fighters from east of the country. We'll turn shortly with Mission. Stay with us. It's now time for Mission. Mission is supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Now, academic work at Goethe KKMA Primary School is affected during the rainy season due to the absence of a bridge on the Laloy Lagoon. Teachers want a bridge constructed to facilitate easy movement of pupils. The school is sandwiched between Pram Pram and then Boom. And you will have to travel about three kilometers from Boom to Poete, or five kilometers from Pram Pram 
to pour it there. And the problem is, when you get to the shore, there are two water bodies there, the sea and then a lagoon. Sometimes they meet, so it cuts off access route to boom. Since its establishment in 1984, the Poate KKMA Primary School in the Tonkatamansu Municipality of the Greater Accra Region has had problems with tidal waves and flooding. The Lalue Lagoon separates Tone from Poete, meaning teachers, pupils and residents have to use canoes, sometimes without life jackets, to cross over. To avoid crossing the lagoon, the teachers and pupils have to travel through Pram Pram to reach the community at a higher cost. Many a time when the sea and then the lagoon come together, it becomes extremely difficult to go through that route. So any teacher or any officer that wants to go to Poete will have to take a very long route through Dwayna, Pram Pram before you reach. And the road to the place, especially from Pram Pram to Poete, is very, very bad. We followed up with the Municipal Chief Executive of Tonkatamanso on the situation at Poete. If the stream has entered the sea, it means they have to cross by boat. And they have a lot of constraints when we want to link up. We wanted to open up the big bridge from Pohia that links Pram Pram. Uh, we want to take hold of the Pon side. We are having a joint appeal, Ningo Pram Pram and Tonkatamanso, to have the one on the stream to link, which it takes five minutes to drive to Pram Pram. Then going through the heavy traffic through Bombaria, Dawenya before you drive a whole lot of time going to Pram Pram. We believe when we are able to fix that bridge, it will, it will open up the transport system. It will even change the socio-economic dynamics of the people. Previously, lack of teachers and adequate classrooms in the school compelled many parents to withdraw their wards to schools in Pram Pram and Thun. But the Municipal Assembly and Education Directorate stepped in to provide an accommodation for teachers. With a current population of less than 100 and a staff strength of seven, the headmaster of the school is unhappy about enrollment. We try to convince parents to bring their children to the school, but all proved future. And the children are in the community, but we are still trying other means to get the children back to the school. That is not the only challenge in the school. The school is also in dire need of a kindergarten block since kindergarten class is currently occupying class one. Meanwhile, due to the school being close to the shore, most of the ICT equipment donated by church are not functioning. Despite these challenges, school authorities are hopeful students would excel to make an impact in society someday. Now, more children are getting an education in the Punkatamansu municipality of the Greater Accra region. Though the increase in enrollment is good news, there's a challenge as the situation has led to congestion affecting quality teaching and learning. The mission team was at the Bichele in the Punkatamansu municipality and has come through with this report. If you enter some of the classrooms, you can't be there for more than 10 minutes. The heat is unbearable and concentration among pupils is low. But the teachers here at the Bechile KKMA No. 2 KG Primary School are trying to make the best out of the situation. About 97 pupils are crammed in one classroom with only one teacher who has to move intermittently out of the classroom to receive fresh air. Our municipal has the highest number of private schools. We have almost 380, but the public schools are less than 60. So if they can increase the number of public schools, they are really scattered. You get one here, you move far. If you go to Bechile, the whole of the Bechile community, including Kakasunaka and its environs, we have only one Bechile school. See, so if we can get another school, because people walk for long distances, that is another difficulty. Between Bechile and Apollonia, there is no school. So you can imagine, they walk very, very far. 
even we are compelled to make the junior high school also a shift school. The situation could have been different if this Gets Fund project had been completed. The building behind me belongs to the Bechile Primary and Junior High School. We understand for the past six years, this Gets Fund project has stalled. When completed, this would solve the numerous challenges that the school is confronted with. We sought answers from the municipal chief executive. When you work with trusted people, you always see success. It is a contractor who came to us and we negotiate and we went through the process. In the Bechile, the contractor came to me. He want iron rod. He went there, they gave him all the conditions. He never come back because I believe he is having a different thing in his mind. But we are ready to assist the contractors to the local manufacturers. We have cement companies here. We have iron rod companies here. We have the timber market within our municipality. Any building material needed, we can guarantee for a contractor. But you must sign a contract with us to your clients that whenever the, your monies are due, they will write a joint check. And some cannot come because they don't want to do what we feel is the best way to enhance their performance. That is not the only challenge in the school. The science laboratory has been taken over by the police who are currently using the facility which pupils previously used for their science practicals. At the Gina High School section, some teachers have their staff common room outside. Lack of fencing in the school makes it prone to theft. Weeks ago, some persons broke into the Gina High School section of the school and made away with some school materials for teaching and learning. Authorities are hopeful that Get Fund projects will be completed quickly to solve the congestion problem the school is grappling with. And that's all for Mission Tonight. Mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Right, you're still watching News 360, and let's get on to this story. TV3 News is just learning that at least five people are feared dead with others injured in an accident involving a truck and a mini passenger bus at Anchenin near Apoa in the western region on Saturday afternoon. According to an eyewitness, the mini passenger bus was traveling from Agunan Kwanta heading towards Takrade, while the truck, which also was conveying bauxite, was from Takradi heading the opposite direction. However, the bauxite truck in an attempt to overtake another vehicle caused the accident. The injured as well as bodies of the deceased have been conveyed to the Fianquanta Regional Hospital. And now let's get on to the phone and speak to Nicholas Nyako. Nicholas Nyako is the assembly member for the Apoa area. Nicholas, good evening, if you can hear us. Yeah, fine evening, sir. Right. So, uh, Nicholas, what do you think Hello? caused the accident? Oh, thank you very much for this investigation. It is true, as I say, around 4.30 to 5, and I hear rumors in the community that a friend of mine, he is a driver called Sibu, has had an accident at Anchenyungkwanta. So quickly, how to get the taxi to the scene? When I went better, it was very brutal. That was the first time I see a head off for a woman being. His head is off. He had been chopped by the car. The man was saying that the boy's had car. The boy's had car. He overtake cars. Two cars at the, at the same time. Then the accident occurred. He hit the fish car from Adran Quanta. Coming. Hello, Nicholas. Are you there? I'm there. Yes. So, so Nicholas, from your observation, we understand some people have unfortunately lost yeah. their lives. When I read How many can you count? I was, I was told three people. Right. Two people. Immediately three people off. Those who are the driver's left side. At the rest of the window. Yeah. 
All right, so Nicholas, we are grateful for your time. I'm sure this is a developing story. So we will definitely do a follow up and bring the details to our viewers. You're watching News 360, Aisha. In some more stories, the Kokrobite Health Center has recorded an increase in safe deliveries from 270 in 2017 to 286 in 2018. Antenatal as attendance has also appreciated from 2,410 to 2,667 within the period without a single mortality. Peter Kawadata reports the health facility, however, lacks space and required logistics. The Kokrobite Health Center is the only government health facility serving over 57,000 residents living in the area with high fertility rate. Unfortunately, the facility lacks a number of the essential requirements. The entire maternity unit that records up to 286 annual antenatal attendance, for instance, has only two bed wards. Nurses and midwives meander their way in this small space meant to take care of all their services. The unit also relies on this obsolete delivery bed that is supported with pieces of wood. Referrals are also made through the use of taxi to either the Wager Municipal Hospital or the Greater Accra Regional Hospital due to the absence of ambulance service. In spite of all these, the facility has not recorded any mortality within recent years. Available statistics for 2017 and 2018 showed encouraging records. Safe deliveries increased from 279 to 286 as antenatal attendance shot up by 257. In a bid to sustain the gains amidst the challenges, the center intensified their national pregnancy activities. The midwives, they are so pressed with time that they don't have enough time to do all these explanations. So this helps to you know, teach the mothers a lot throughout pregnancy and labor and puerperium until the time they are ready to get pregnant again and even family planning as well. The program takes expectant mothers through varying lessons, the do's and don'ts in order to help the mothers protect themselves and their unborn babies. Participants are then graduated after they have delivered successfully. It's free. Yours is to come and learn. We teach them even sex position, sex in pregnancy, nutrition, drugs, exercises you are supposed to do. The 2018-2019 batch saw huge participation of husbands of the pregnant women, a situation described by the health workers as positive. When their husbands follow them to the school, it helps them. Some of them, they don't like taking the drug. When the husband is part, they will force them to take and when they come to, they will know that the things they are supposed to bring. Some of the graduates shared their experiences. I was eating a lot of ice block, but when I came, they told me to stop. And I was eating that soil clay. They told me that it will affect my baby and affect me also. So I will urge everyone to come so that they will avoid all these petty petty things that can cause miscarriage. Especially for the first timers, because they are the professionals and they will teach you what to expect and they will teach you so many things, the foods to eat during pregnancy and even after pregnancy and then what to expect when you are in labor, all those things. Now, Associate Professor at the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana, Professor Ransford Jampo, says the creation of the Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs is a disservice to constitutionalism in the country. At the intercollege lecture series at the University of Ghana here in Accra, Professor Jampo said the service is also, the, the practice subdues Parliament under the control of the executive. The 1992 Constitution combined some features of the United States presidential and the UK systems of government, having practiced three different constitutions along the lines of both systems since 1960. There was the need for a hybrid system of government. At the inter-college lecture series on the theme, the 1992 Constitution and Constitutionalization in Ghana, Associate Professor at the Department of Political Science, Professor Randford Jampu, was not happy the Constitution of Ghana gives enormous powers to the President, making him control almost all appointments in the country. He appoints virtually everybody, 
But when it comes to even people he does not directly appoint, he has a say in influencing the process to be sure that his preferred choice is there. He argued the creation of a Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs is a clear indication of the control the executive has on the legislature. Whether you like it or not, what you see during the selection or election of a Speaker of Parliament is just a charade. The President actually appoints a Speaker of Parliament behind the scenes. This appointment of Majority Leader of Parliament, the President has a role in that and also appointment or creation of the office of the minister for parliamentary affairs or creation of a ministry responsible for parliamentary affairs and having a minister in charge of it he admitted the 1992 constitution has kept the peace of the country and made ghana the beacon of democracy but he is of a strong conviction that the constitution needs to be overhauled that constitution which contains imponderable and monumental hurdles to the quest to bridle the exercise of power, as well as make the president a political king con, can only be kept and maintained by self-seeking, self-aggrandizing, and self-perpetuating cabals. He bemoaned the current government's attitude towards the review of the constitution, by refusing to communicate its position and reasons the document is dormant without any action being taken. Now, the Ghana Revenue Authority is exploring opportunities to rake in more revenue from night trading activities in Kumasi, which has seen an increase in recent times. Officials say the night markets are among potential avenues in the, form, in the informal business sector to expand the tax net in the Ashanti region. The Ashanti Regional Branch of the Ghana Revenue Authority contribution to the total national revenue mobilization is about 4%. This is mainly due to the low tax compliance among informal sector players. The Domestic Revenue Division of the GRA is strategizing to rope in all income earning activities, especially traders who operate at night. Night trading activities is on the increase in areas like Bantama, Central Market, Dr. Mensa and Tech Junction. Chief Revenue Officer in charge of a Doom Small Taxpayer Office, Isaac Kofikui, says the move forms part of measures to expand the tax net. In certain areas in Kumasi here, you would agree with me that night activity, I'm not talking of nightclubs, I'm not talking of restaurants which are normally open throughout the day, I'm talking of people who operate only at night and we have uh, made all the plans and we are on to them. The Ghana Revenue Authority says the region is on course to meet its revenue targets for this year. The general public has been advised to file tax returns before the April 30 deadline. Failing to submit the return is also an offense and if you don't keep proper records on which your returns are based is also an offense. We want to be truthful to each other so that our assessment of your income and your profit and therefore your taxes will be so fair. The authority is targeting to double the number of taxpayers in the country to generate enough revenue for development. The public has also been urged to register for their tax identification number. And now the executive director of Gender Planning Council, Joanna Opare, has called for a completion of the draft strategic implementation plan for the national gender policy, which was developed in 2015. Now she made this call at the eight lecture series of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Lagos. Implementation of the national gender policy will need a national strategy. This strategic implementation plan developed in 2015 is expected to be the operational scheme guiding the national policy. The aim of the policy is to mainstream gender equality and women's empowerment in Ghana's development efforts. This is to ensure that the social, legal, civic, political, economic and cultural conditions of the people, particularly women and men, boys and girls, would improve in an appreciable manner. 
Speaking on the theme, Gender Issues in Europe and Lessons for Ghana, Executive Director of Gender Planning Consult, Joanna Opari, said the completion of the Strategic Implementation Plan would aid Ghana in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. If we also have our own plan in place, a strategy, it is easy to pick the things, develop proposals, requests, and so on, because the ministry lacks you know, adequate funding. So if you see this, everybody knows you are serious, you have outlined what you want, you have your targets set, you know, dates and everything, you have monitoring indicators to see and so on. So they know that they are coming to somebody who wants to really move forward. She is also hopeful the affirmative action bill will be passed soon to ensure equal representation of women in key public appointments. We've done a lot of uh, consultations, we've reviewed the drafts, to incorporate concerns from a cross-section of society. So I believe that uh, in no time, in a month or two, it should be able to hit cabinet for final approval and then go to parliament. The Spanish ambassador to Ghana, Alicia Rico, also called for a legal framework which would ensure inequality is sanctioned. We have created a legal framework that responds to those strategic frameworks and action plans of the European Union. And we have adopted a series of laws, including equal opportunity strategy plans, the basic law for the effective equality of women and men, and a special law on gender violence and domestic abuse. Not only a special law, we have a special court to prosecute these cases. Various speakers at the event emphasized that women empowerment is not to disempower men. You're watching News 360, also live on DSTV Channel 279. After the break, we have sports. Please stay with us. And in this segment tonight, several thousands or several underground artists thronged to Studio B this Friday to try their luck as TV3 Music Music opens for audition. A move to make way for upcoming artists to showcase their musical talent to the world on the live show. Hey, Inability to get media exposure has been a major concern for many in the creative arts sector. And many underground artists have lamented for unavailability of support. Actors, musicians and poets seize every opportunity given by the media to exhibit their works to the world. Dedicated to supporting underground artists, Music Music had its second open audition, a move to make way for upcoming artists to perform and make their musical works known to the world. Having an earth many talent in the past, several underground artists from in and out of Accra thrown to Studio B this Friday to audition for TV3's Music Music. I'm a tardy based artist, but now I'm currently in Accra trying to promote my songs. We've been case watching this, this platform. It's promoted a lot. Today if I'm here, I'm blessed to be here and I'm blessed to be a part of Music Music and then Big Up TV3. They've always been there for us. It's, it's a very big platform and I think everybody whether big star or young star, whether upcoming, no matter who you are, you need to be on this platform. Over the years, the show has paraded some of Ghana's biggest names in music on the stage. Tonight, audience will witness another captivating musical performances. And that's how we end News 360 tonight. My name is Issa Moni. And my name is Aisha Yakubu. There's more news on our website. It is 3news.com. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening. <laughs>